such a powerful thing. I think about that almost daily. Like the fact, first off, the fact that we are alive when we have music just in our pockets is mind blowing. Yeah. But I mean, it can change your mood. It can turn a bad day really good it can get you pumped up it can make you feel emotions that you might not have been feeling prior to listening to it i mean it is incredible and it's just noise Mm -hmm. like it really is it's just somebody opening and closing their mouth and then somebody banging on an instrument and it's beautiful our brains were meant to take in music they were built for it like there's this uh, book called um this is your brain on music And, uh, you know, so it involves like science and music and they did some experiment where they took like, um, back in black and they're like, okay, just tap with your fingers. What you think the tempo to back in black is dun, 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 dun. Classic song. You know, everybody knows the tempo of that just off the top of their head because our brains were meant to take that information in and register it and make us feel a certain way. And yeah, you're right. It's like, Every single song that you hear, being able to, um, you know, tick you off when you need it because you're about to go compete or being able to calm you down when you need it because you're about to go have a serious conversation or, you know, make you feel um, a a little bit of joy whenever you're missing somebody. Uh, Dude, that's that's a hell of a drug. And it's one that I would definitely prescribe more than social media. It's the best drug. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah. So talk to me more about about the record you put out because I think that I, – dude, I think that is so freaking cool. Oh, man. Okay, so the lead song is called Kite. And you wrote – did you write all these songs? Wrote it all. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, wrote everything. It's, it's hard to write, man. Oh, I bet. Yeah. It's, uh, it's hard to write a song, but it's like um, – the first one is – so I was sitting there trying to write lyrics, and I was like, you know, total brain fart. You know, I was like, I, I can't – I don't know what the heck I'm going to write. What am I going to do a song about? This is the first one. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, I haven't had my coffee. And so I'm going to write an entire song that's a metaphor about me being pissed off that coffee is required as a crutch for me to be able to even write a damn song in the first place. So the song is like I brought a, a kite to a knife fight because I forgot my coffee or a kite to a gunfight because I forgot my coffee. Um, so that's that's the first one. And, you know, you know, I try to embellish um my sound a little bit uh with with a little help on that one so um dominic romano did some of the the instrumental work and the production and stuff from bongo boy studio and okay. really really fancied that one up and bongo boy made me sound like i almost halfway deserved to be on the radio on that song <laughs> almost halfway deserved it but uh the next one um is called scroll and so it's about this sort of uh, psychological downsides to social media that we've been oh, talking about. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to check that one out. That one's kind of fun. Uh, you know, it's kind of got like a sort of like a reggae bass line, and then it kind of switches into sort of like a hard rock sort of chorus, which is really weird, you know, an odd juxtaposition. That's unique, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the third one is called Number One Fan, and it's about my daughter. Uh, she's seven years old. Her name's Audrey, and she's just the smartest, funniest little whip. Um, and then the um, the fourth one is called Fireworks, and it's about my girl, Shy. And uh, the fifth one um, is called Outer Spaced, and it's a metaphor for people, um, you know, letting others um, have negative feelings toward people for no reason uh, based on pol- politics and, and stuff. But it's all done in a uh, it, under, under the veil of a uh, alien invasion. Super, super nerdy. Like, that's the nerdiest one. Uh, but I had so much fun writing it. So that one's called Outer Spaced. And then the last one is called The Key. And I wrote that one like um, a long time ago uh, when I was in college. It was probably the last song that I wrote before I just stopped and started focusing on Case Lug and t- the Time Standard and Caltrans and all that other stuff that I've done. But How long did it take for you to write these? I mean, not the one from college, but... Yeah, uh, gosh, you know, it would take like a good four or five days for all the lyrics for every single one but then the music you know i wrote the music too and, oh you did oh mm-hmm. wow so the music is like you know coming up with chord progressions and stuff that can take a while is that harder than coming up with the lyrics themselves i'd say equally hard for okay. me you know what i mean because uh you know i write a lot so i felt like some of the lyrics came really easily sometimes when, when i had my coffee okay yeah right <laughs> uh, when you say you write you write just lyrics 
or like you just you're writing i would start with the music first i'd okay. come up you know so i'd take out the acoustic guitar and come up with some chord progressions and write those chord progressions down and then i'd kind of like sit and think okay well what kind of vibe does this have and then i'd write um you know lyrics to that and then add drums and bass and all that other good stuff and um so yeah i mean i did um the the lyrics the music composition um the guitar i played bass i played piano on some wow, songs you, keyboard you're kind of a jack of all trades huh so yeah i mean doing all that stuff on every single song there's one that's, of those songs probably took me a month to do that's a lot of work you know just like okay well nights and weekends i'm doing podcasting and music so shout out to shy and audrey for you know letting me kind of pursue those passions in the free time and stuff but um yeah, you know, it's it's just one of those things. You got to have your outlet, um, and I I hope that a lot of people find theirs. Whether it's just fucking doing a puzzle, or finding new music, or you know, submitting new music to Humboldt Last Week Radio. You know? Definitely recommend it. Yeah, yeah. Not that that's a plug or anything, but um, yeah. Like I think that uh, you know, there's a lot of good ways that we can um, kind of just release from all the tension of now of 2021 yeah it sounds like a lot of those songs were like some cathartic release just hearing kind of a quick version of what they're about like it sounds like they relate to a lot of what's going on now yeah and just trying to process that and work through that yeah yeah and i think that um there's something really to be said about like you know having nothing to do like that's that'll really get you a lot of trouble you know so like I always I have ADHD, dude. I have to be doing something, you know, or I'm gonna get into trouble, man. Like you, you mentioned having a crazy childhood. I got into trouble so many times, dude. So I needed something to do, um, and it's you know it's important to know yourself, really, um, because if you don't know yourself, then I mean you're never gonna get it right with others. And not even fully. You just have to have like a rough idea of who you are and who you want to be Mm -hmm. i think because if you don't have a direction like i know i'm not where i want to be as a person i think if i sat down and thought about it but i'm definitely closer than i was five years ago like i'm becoming that person i don't know if i'll ever reach that but i think taking progressive steps and following passions and doing things that that not to sound corny but like enrich you in Mm -hmm. some fundamental way like that is all part of it you have to take these moments and run with it when you find something you care about yeah if you can look back five years ago and say oh my gosh i'm in a better place now like you should feel really happy about that absolutely like don't compare yourself to you know others because that's really gonna that's really gonna bum, bum you the heck out dude um but if you're comparing yourself to yourself i think that's valid i think that's important I think that's all you can do. Mm-hmm. You, everybody's in their own race, and mm-hmm. we're we're running kind of in parallel. But what what trips me up might not trip you up, and what you the obstacle you face next might not be the one I face next. Like you just gotta keep your head down and chase what you love. Yeah. Like I think that's like hearing you talk about this. It's easy to tell that you're passionate about music for sure. I mean that just comes across. And I think that's awesome that you got back into it. But some people don't. Like some people, they have that when they're a kid, whether it's music or painting or doing some creative art, and then they go to school or they have to get a job, and then that becomes their life. Mm -hmm. And there isn't that release anymore. And I think that's why people are so pent up now with rage and so quick to jump on others is because nobody has a release. Nobody's doing what they love. Nobody's following a passion. It's just you work because you have to make money to support your family or your life or Mm -hmm. have a roof over your head. And there's no time to do anything else, especially like these manual labor jobs. Man, that it's fucking hard to go bust your ass roofing a house or pouring concrete and then go and try to do something you're passionate about because you're just fucking tired or even just flipping burgers all day. That's got to wear on you in a weird way. That's such a good point, man. Because, I mean, sure, we can sit here all day and say, oh, get yourself a podcast, make yourself an album. But, I mean, shout out to everybody out there that is busting ass for their family and doesn't have time to do stuff like this. You know, how lucky are we? We're so fucking, we're so lucky to be able to do stuff like that. But, um, you know, there's little things I think everyone can still do. 
you know, okay, listen to a podcast that makes you happy while you work, you know, try to find these things that, you know, you can, you can treat yourself, um, you know, like Aziz used to say in Parks and Rec. Um, <laughs> Great show. Yeah, yeah. You know, you can you can find little ways to do that. And I really hope that people do um, and that we just kind of throw out this notion of like, oh, I have to be a hard ass and never have fun um, and never try to find a way to treat myself better. Because like, I mean, we're just fragile, you know, human beings are so fragile. And there's like this narrative that, you know, men have to be less fragile than women and stuff. But it's like, we also have to understand ourselves and like, just kind of throw out all those like stereotypes, you know what I mean? Like, sure. Um, you know, step up and, and be assertive whenever you need to be. But also be aware of like, you know, humanity is like, there's, we don't have to, we don't have to be so like in everybody's face all the time. You know, I, I see that mentality out there a lot. I see people out there just driving, like, get the heck out of my way. 